one material in a heavy star that cannot be fused into something heavier. Uh, a, a large star before it dies has an inert core of iron in it. And because fusion stops at that point. And um, if uh, oftentimes what happens to a star like that is uh, the, the outer gases crush in on the inert iron core and the thing explodes and it's called a supernova. And the supernova can lead to times either a neutron star or a black hole. More often a neutron star. Now if you look at the uh, if you look at the uh, curve of this graph, I mean we can we can kind of ignore this, by the way, this isn't hydrogen one diameter. But if you have this figure in your book, you may, you may want to refer to it. You can't read it here. This is hydrogen two. What would hydrogen two be? Okay, if it's hydrogen, it must have only how many protons? One. 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 If I call it hydrogen, it's D equal one. But if it's hydrogen two, it must also have a neutron. Does anybody know what hydrogen two is called? Deuterium. Deuterium. If you make if you make water with hydrogen two, it's called heavy water. Deuterium. And this is called heavy hydrogen. Okay. Now, obviously, there is no such thing as binding energy for nucleons for hydrogen one. Why? Hydrogen one. Why wouldn't you? Oh, you got it. Really, you got your mind on that turkey. Got zero. There's nothing to bind to. There's only one nucleon. So how can you have a binding energy if there's nothing to bind to? You have to fix at least two to tango. Okay? And then the helium's got a high binding energy. It drops a little bit for uh, lithium. And, but then it makes a pretty steady climb up to iron. Iron. Now, what, later on in the next chapter, we're going to talk about uh, the fusion of, of elements, which simply means putting two light elements together to make a heavy element. Fusion can work this way, you see. For example, you can fuse uh, deuterium to helium uh, in the stars or in the hydrogen bubble. And you make, or, or let's put it this way, you can, you can fuse two uh, heavy hydrogens to make a helium. And in the process, you, you gain you give up some energy and you gain more binding energy because helium is more stable than, than deuterium. Okay? So going this way, fusion is feasible. In the stars, for example, they have a process where three helium nuclei fuse to form um, a carbon. Now you see that's feasible because a carbon is more stable. You're giving up a little binding energy uh, a little mass converts into energy when you go from three he uh, heliums to one carbon in that fusion step here. But you can't fuse uh, iron because there's nowhere to go. You're already at the maximum binding energy for nuclear. Now, going the other way, if you're over here and you have plutonium-239 or, or uh, uh, uranium-235, that undergoes fission. And Here's 238. So you can you can accept the fact that 235 is around here somewhere. It's not stable. It undergoes fission. But it's energetically favorable for it to undergo fission because when it fissions, it produces two heavy daughter isotopes which have more binding energy, in other words, are more stable. This figure is confusing and is sometimes drawn in the opposite because we usually think of binding as falling deeper and deeper into a hole. But you'll have to accept that, that it can also be written this way. So going this way is more stable. Going this way is more stable. With iron, you have nowhere to go. So it, it looks like nickel has a... Yeah, slightly. Uh, but, the, but the, it's in the same ballpark. In fact, we believe that 